Design Spark. I've got something fun for us to look at today. It's a discovery kit from ST Micro for the STM32 MP157A. And to discover what that is, keep watching the video. The STM32 MP1 product line is something of a departure into new territory for ST Micro, into the realms of microprocessor systems. Interestingly, they've built it around reusing the STM32 ecosystem that many of you will be familiar with. There's an ARM Cortex M4 in the device with the same peripherals and connectivity that you'd find in any of ST's microcontrollers. So if you already have M4 firmware built with tools like Keel or IAR or CubeMX, you can keep using these tools and simply drop the binaries that you have straight into the MP1's Linux file system. For the added Cortex A7 application processors, an open embedded and Yocto based Linux ecosystem has been developed along with the supporting infrastructure. The feature set is pretty extensive with security features like crypto and hashing, PWMs and timers for control applications, ADCs and DACs for analog interactions, and extensive connectivity including gigabit ethernet, a MIPI DSi display interface and loads more. The 3D GPU is a Vivanti GC Nano IP and has native Linux support for OpenGL ES2 and OpenVG 1.1. The device will also support multiple types of DDR and flash memory. CubeMX has been enhanced to allow peripheral mapping between the A7 cores and the M4 core, giving them near identical memory maps for these peripherals. CubeMX also creates the Linux device tree and facilitates DRAM interface training so developers can get the best memory performance possible. Internally, the peripheral mapping is done by attaching peripherals to either an advanced extensible interface or AXI bus or to an advanced high performance or AHB bus depending on the peripheral's best optimization. AXI has some extra features like multi-channel operation, out-of-order transactions and full duplex operations that some peripherals won't use. As both AXI and AHB are part of the advanced microcontroller bus architecture spec, they play well together, allowing both A7s and M4 to use any peripheral. As I mentioned, there is a family of devices with different speeds and features. The discovery kits are based around these devices, the DK1 uses a 157A, where the DKU2 uses a 157C. The main difference between the two devices is whether the security features like crypto and hashing are enabled or not. So, what do we get with an STM32MP157A discovery kit? Well, let's open the box and find out. So, first of all, we have a USB Type-C to Type-C connector, which we'll put to the side in protection. Some documentation that uh, gives us a list of features on the board and a link to the getting started. Yep, okay. And here's our board itself. Let's pop that down here and let's move the box out the way. So that is our board. So let's have a little tour around the board then. Well, there's a, a lot on this board. So let's have a little look around at all the things that are packed in there. So starting at the top right, shall we? We've got four USB host ports and below that we have a USB Type-C connector. And below that we have an HDMI connector. And here is the Lattice Semiconductor HDMI bridge. And we have an ST-Link LED here. And this is the ST-Link chip. And here's the ST-Link USB connector. And running along the bottom we have uh, some user LEDs and some user switches and 
this is the all important reset switch all very useful and here's our audio jack and that's connected to this Sirius Logic 42L51 device which is a low power stereo codec with a headphone amp and moving on we have a wake up button we have our ethernet connector and that's connected to this Realtek Gigabit Ethernet transceiver. And moving on, we have the input power connector. That's another USB Type-C connector. Now this is where we would, if we had a 157C or D or whatever, uh, we would have our Wi-Fi and BLE uh, chip here. Uh, but we don't have that on here and moving on we have a DSI connector here and running along the top we have a 40 pin connector which is a Raspberry Pi uh, connector so um, we can connect up Raspberry Pi hats and things if we're that way inclined here uh, is our STP mic now, this is the uh, power chip for the board and we've got a little article on that below this video here's our ddr3 memory and this puppy here is our processor itself the stmp or stm32 mp157 device in this case it's 157a now if we were to turn the board over on this side of the board we have some arduino connectors and we also have the socket for our sd card and our boot mode switches which are quite important when it comes to programming the board up so that's our whistle stop to around the board hardware so let's briefly think about software development if you're going to develop software for the STM32 MP157, you're going to need a Linux machine, and that can be either native or virtual. If we look at what I have here, it's a virtual machine uh, running Ubuntu. This is version 20.04 LTS, which the ST software has been tested against. If you don't have a virtual machine set up, you'll need to set aside maybe an afternoon to make sure you install Linux and all the development packages that you'll need to your virtual machine. There's a great guide on the ST Wiki page, which I will uh, leave a link to below, and this will take you through all that you need to install and how to install the ST development software. Once you have the Q program installed, you can connect your board via ST-Link. Let's run it up. There we go. And we can connect via ST-Link. And once you've selected the correct firmware, you can download it with a click of the download button. Of course, you'll need to make sure that the boot switches on the back of your board have been set to the on position. From there, we can check the device that ST-Link is using. So we're using ACM0. And using that, we can run up Minicom. There we go, we're into our board. And let's have a look. Let's uh, just make sure that it is our board. Let's see, yep, there we go. There's the uh, setup that we expect to see. And let's see what IP address we have. Okay, so. We're on 1681118. So 
knowing that let's uh, just come out of come out of minicom and x yep leave minicom and we can now use that uh, ip address to ssh into our board via ethernet and let's check again yep that looks like our board it's beyond the scope of an introductory video to get deep into the software development side of things but when the time comes for you to do that as I mentioned before, the ST Wiki page is definitely the place to start that journey. When we power up the board, making sure those boot switches on the reverse side are set to on, we should end up with something that looks a bit like this. And one thing that shows that the board is working how we expect it to is this blue flashing LED here. I have a mouse and keyboard plugged into the USB, and because the board's running Linux, that's just working for us. I also have an HDMI cable plugged in so that we can see what's going on with the demo software and what's being output to the screen. And for good measure, I've also included an audio output and an ethernet cable uh, because this board doesn't have the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So that's the setup. Let's have a look at what's on the screen. And this is what it looks like on my monitor. If you have a DK2, this will be on the screen that's mounted to your board. We have a few built-in demos that can be launched from this splash screen. And that's running on a Python interpreter on the board, which I suppose is a demonstration in itself that we can run Python scripts on this board. Now this particular first app that we're looking at here this gives us some network information we can run that uh, we can see that there's no Wi-Fi on this board which we already know um, if we escape from that uh, if you have a USB webcam you can plug it in and fire it up using this next app here um, moving along we also can do video playback with this board so let's have a go at that one population continues to grow and age as people live longer. This calls for innovative ideas. ST is and will be there. Well, there you go. Nice bit of uh, a sales pitch there for you. So, uh, But it is pretty cool and uh, hopefully you could uh, hear the audio as well. The next app on the list uh, is a Bluetooth speaker. You can, if you have the DK2, which has the Bluetooth, uh, you can fire up audio with this app on your Bluetooth speaker. And we also have a nice little 3D app here, which demonstrates the power of the GPU that's built into the board. And you can sort of drag this around a bit. Um, all very fun. Uh, yeah. So we're, there we go. And we also have an artificial intelligence app which will do some simple character recognition for you. And because this is Linux, we have a terminal, which means that we can check up on our environment. So if we just run a couple of standard commands on here, we can see that it's a fairly standard looking Linux file system. We can also check up on our build which gives us some information on uh, the build configuration that we have uh, and if we were looking at uh, some of the system information we got all the the usual commands you name and we can also uh, look and see what kind of space is available on our uh, file systems that are mounted. Let's have a look. Here we go. So 
If you're familiar at all with Linux, you'll be familiar with what's going on on this board. And that wraps up our video for today. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed it, please leave a like and maybe even a comment below. See you soon.